What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at some Steelers run game film. Uh, going to be kind of trying to explain some of the things I'm seeing on tape uh, and explain kind of why the uh, the Steelers run game is struggling so much uh, so far this season. They're 31st in the NFL in success rate. It's not great. Uh, it's definitely something that they need to get fixed moving forward. Um, so just before we get started, uh, diving into the tape, just please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment. All that stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. So, um, you know, I didn't want to look too deep into the run game struggles in week one. You know, the Niners obviously have one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in football. And the game was out of hand so quickly that, I mean, the run game was pretty much going to be a non-factor regardless. You know, they were down three scores uh, in the second quarter. So, but Cleveland was a little bit different. You know, this game was really back and forth and, Really, they struggled to run the ball really from the jump. Uh, this play is actually going to be outside zone from the gun. Um, and, you know, I see a couple problems with this uh, play in general. One, I do not like outside zone from the gun. And I'll kind of explain a little bit of that, of the reasons why. But uh, just on this play, we're going to focus on center Mason Cole. Okay, so um, the things that they are asking Mason Cole to do in the run game, I'm not sure that he is actually capable of doing. And part of that is on coaching. Uh, so here's an example right here. They are going to be running zone to the right uh, with this kind of jet motion right here. And they're going to be asking Cole to reach this three technique on the right side of the line of scrimmage. You can tell that he's not even close to being able to reach this guy. James Daniels barely gives him a touch, doesn't bump him over at all. And, you know, the three techniques able to get quick penetration. And then on top of that, uh, James Daniels, in addition to not giving Cole any help right there, uh, with his left arm, he also misses the linebacker in space, hands to the face right there, and then we get a run through uh, in the backfield. So, you know, never good. We missed two blocks on the play side, and anytime, you know, you're running any type of lateral run or outside outside run, if you get this kind of run through right here, you're going to, you know, cause your back a lot of issues. You know, there's nowhere to cut back. Um you know, he's pretty much met behind the line of scrimmage. So it's not on the back. That's just poor blocking. And in my opinion, uh, you know, Mason Cole being asked to do stuff he's not athletically capable of doing. Um, here's another example of them running the same exact play later in the game, just to a different side. Now, Najee does a great job, you know, making something happen out of nothing right here. I also want to real quick highlight the outstanding effort um, from Calvin Austin right here. Just literally driving this corner, driving this corner, driving this corner all the way back that's that's great that's how you create explosive uh plays in the run games you know you get really good comp contributions from your receivers so that's all great but again uh struggles getting penetration as soon as Najee's getting the ball so again we're running outside zone to the left here with the motion watch this edge defender rip right inside of Dan Moore barely get a hand on him Connor Hayward's coming over boom he gets pushed back so we got two blockers that barely got a hand on this edge rusher whatsoever. He's got him in the grass. Look at all these white jerseys that are unaccounted for. We've got three, four guys in the backfield. You know, they really should have him dead to rights right here. This is this is an outstanding play by the running back. And I know that, you know, there have been some frustrations with Najee Harris, and I totally get some of them are accurate. But right now, it is hard to run the football behind this offensive line. And really the problems really extend past the offensive line as well. Um, just some of the, you know, things that we'll go over later in the video, it's not just the line, it's the tight ends. It's some of it's scheme related here. We're trying to run uh, outside zone to the weak side. First things first, you know, this line stunt from Cleveland is going to cause a lot of issues for the Steelers. You see their entire defensive line is going to slide to the left of the screen. You see what this does to Mason Cole. He's, you know, coming out of his stance because he's trying to, you know, get over there and reach this guy. He slants inside. Watch Cole, you know, his body posture is completely facing the other side of where he's supposed to be going. By this time, you know, by the time he like kind of changes directions and tries to redirect to go get this uh, play side linebacker, uh, the play side linebacker has already gotten to his gap, sliced underneath of him, and then makes the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Again, there's not really a ton of places to go here because Najee is reading, you know, the outside foot of that tackle on wide zone. And, you know, this cut, the first cutback lane is taken away. 
And then the second cutback lane, we get a linebacker running through unabated, hit at the line of scrimmage. Um, and then I really want to touch on the tight ends as well. Uh, this was something that really was a theme throughout the game. And I thought that uh, the Cleveland edge rushers really took it personally when they when the Steelers tried to block them with tight ends. And um, there was a bunch of different examples of where they kind of uh, won those matchups and then ultimately won the won the rep because of it. Here the Steelers are trying to run again outside zone. Actually, this is probably more mid zone than anything uh, to the weak side. But again, Mason Cole trying to reach this guy. We get beat. Um, you know, again, just familiar issues with Cole, uh, who's off to a really start, really slow start to the season. Uh, but I wanted to highlight this backside uh, block from Pat Firemuth. I don't know what this is, man. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I don't know what this is. I don't know why we're trying. I'm assuming he's trying to cut block him here. Um, I don't know why. He's trying to cut block him. I mean, you don't have to do anything too crazy. You just got to make sure that he doesn't run down the play from behind. You don't even have to win the rep. You just have to lose slowly. Um, I don't like calling players out for poor effort, but the film's the film. This is this is poor effort. That's I don't know what that is, but um, that's bad, man. And Pat's not known for his blocking skills. You know, I, I touched on that on Twitter a lot last year. Uh, that was one of the reasons that they brought in Darnell Washington, but – um, we got to give some type of effort in the right game. I know he's not getting targeted a lot in the passing game, but um, stuff like that's ugly to put on tape. You know, that stuff like that is going to drive coaches insane. And, um, you know, speaking of Darnell Washington, you know, Washington himself really struggled in this matchup, uh, in particular at the point of attack. You know, Cleveland was doing a good job, you know, playing with better pad level. Washington was really high on a couple reps um, and just ultimately was losing. Uh, pretty quickly and here the Steelers are you know they're in 13 personnel so we got three tight ends to the right we're trying to run duo and the whole idea of duo is just getting as many double teams as we can up front uh, for the backer to kind of read this Mike linebacker Uh, you see two double teams at the point of attack on both of the tackles neither of those generate any type of vertical displacement like whatsoever Uh, Daniels is coming off to get the mic who's flowing fast downhill but I want you guys to watch what number 80 on the right side of the screen has going on over here. This is a really tough block because we're asking a tight end to block a defensive end one-on-one. But this is not losing slowly. That's just getting absolutely manhandled and driven into the running back's lap. I'm just going to freeze frame it right here. This is this is difficult. Okay, it is, it is impossible to run the football like this. If you're a running back and your tight end is getting driven five, five six yards in the backfield um, at the very start of the play. And I know people are saying, well, like, why? Why?" I had somebody say on Twitter, why didn't he just keep going to the right? Well, both of those defenders have good leverage. They're going to be able to make that stop. The only thing that he possibly could have done is maybe bounce this to the outside. But we got a corner out there that's unblocked um, in general. So maybe he makes that guy miss. Maybe that would have been a better decision. Um, But again, when when a tailback is taking the snap and there is immediately defenders in his lap, this is not this is not what you want. This is not setting up your running back for success. Um, and I thought that this was really, um, unfortunately, kind of in a good example of really what happened all day long. I mean, anytime the Steelers tried to do anything that involved uh, their tight ends trying to at least hold the point of attack, not win at the point of attack, uh, they just couldn't do it. Uh, running wide zone here to the right. Uh, watch this edge defender immediately pushes back Washington. It looks like Washington's trying to just seal him in order to give Warren this cutback. Um But, you know, he gets pushed back into another offensive lineman. Again, another familiar theme, Mason Cole, unable to kind of reach this uh, place at linebacker. So now we've got multiple open runners. Warren has to end up bouncing this outside. And I want to give credit to Denzel Ward, who makes a nice tackle in space on Jalen Warren. You know, but just a really frustrating day overall. And I know a lot of people, you know, are freaking out today because of what Warren Sharp uh, said on Twitter about the whole like tendency thing and everything. This is all stuff that's not new information, by the way. Like when the Steelers are in the gun, they typically throw the ball a lot. When they're under center, they strictly run the ball. That's just how this offense has kind of worked under Matt Canada. But there also are some like other tells that are kind of like frustrating within this offense. I want you to look at Allen Robinson's stance right here. He is completely open and he has his right foot almost pointing, you know, towards the weak side linebacker, you know. This is not him lining up to run a route. I mean, if you can't tell where he's going after this play, um, 
you know, you don't have to watch too much football to kind of get an idea that he's probably coming across the formation, especially because he's off the ball. Um, and that's not necessarily why this play fails by any stretch of the imagination. You know, again, we don't really generate any type of, uh, you know, displacement, you know, moving forward, pushing guys off the ball. But it's just the offense is, just feels so predictable. And they had a couple changeups in this game that they tried to work with, and some of them worked, some of them didn't. Um, you know, here, here was a nice play, um, that they ran a couple times last year, most, mostly against the Colts, but this is just called crunch. Uh, basically it's trap and wham. So we're going to run this to the side, uh, of the three technique to the left here. We're going to basically just bait him into rushing up the field. This is a good way to take advantage of uh really aggressive, uh, defensive lineman. We're going to bait him up the field and have, Darnell Washington kind of come and wham block him, but Washington can't quite mi- can't quite make it there. He actually trips on Dan Moore's foot because Dan Moore is facing Miles Garrett. He gets driven immediately backwards off the ball. You see where he gets kind of shoved two yards in the backfield. That trips Washington, so Washington can't get the uh, three technique, and then Garrett pretty much has uh, Najee Harris really dead to rights as soon as he touches the ball. Um, you know, they ha- they did have a good run on this earlier in the game, so I wanted to kind of show how this is supposed to look, more or less. Um, but a better job for more holding the point of attack and using that outside hand to kind of seal um, the outside. Washington, you know, doesn't trip, is able to do just enough to get this three-tech, who himself kind of trips a little bit on the play, but this is kind of the intention. You kind of let him uh, think that he has a free kind of path to the quarterback. You win blocking with the tight end. What this does, uh, what Crunch does is, you know, it forces this cornerback uh, to make a decision. Is he going to, you know, kind of step up in the B gap right here or is he going to flow outside? Regardless, we're getting a one on one in space with the running back and the corner. And, you know, offenses are going to take that, you know, 10 times out of 10. That's those are the types of matchups that you're looking to create. So. Just a really frustrating day. Um, You know, I don't really know. um you know, if there is a clear cut answer, I think, um, you know, it's it's a myriad of different things. You know, guys aren't generating enough push off the line of scrimmage. We've got some missed assignments. I think some of the things that they are asking the players to do within the scheme um, are not fitted best for their skill set. Um, but overall, you know, the tight ends in particular were worrisome in this one. Uh, but if the Steelers are going to get this offense, you know, they're basically at the bottom of the league in pretty much every statistical category. If they're going to get this offense rolling, they have got to be able to move the football on the ground. And, you know, Harris and Warren have had some decent plays where they've made something out of nothing. So I really don't think that the majority of the blame kind of falls on the running backs. Um, but, you know, other than that, let me know what you guys think, uh, not just about the video, but, you know, the Steelers run game. Y'all see this getting fixed moving forward. Uh, big matchup with the Raiders on Sunday night football. Uh, if you watch to the end, I really appreciate uh, appreciate it. Just make sure, again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. All that stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. Uh, and I will check you guys next time. Peace.